Game controllers have been around for ages. They've evolved from being really simple, basic controllers to really advanced ones that are fully wireless and have a whole load of features and much more advanced joysticks and stuff like that. All while still causing a response to be instant on screen, which is essential in games. But how do controllers work? That's what I'm going to be talking about in this video. So before talking about modern controllers, let's go back to where it all started, with controllers which literally had buttons that could just move left and right, up and down, and other simple buttons on it. And then there was the ones with the joysticks. All of these worked in the same way, they worked by using buttons, which was basically pressed when the joystick moved one way or the other way, and obviously the other buttons were buttons. But yeah, basically how controllers work in general is via circuits. When a circuit's completed, it then sends that signal to the processor in the console, which then does its magic and then converts it to a digital signal, which tells the console to do whatever the game's programmed to do. Which pretty much back then was just to move the breakout ship left and right and shoot and stuff. Games were pretty dull back then. And as joysticks continued to advance, they started to use these metal bars called potentiometers of variable resistors, which is not any less confusing. And they basically measured how much the joystick had been pushed and converted that into a value which Again, it's sent to the game, the games and stuff, yada yada. And going back to circuits again, this basically worked by seeing the length that the current had to travel through the metal bars, and basically measuring that length and knowing what the X value is or the Y value is from that. With it being measured from an input terminal to basically the end of the rod. And when that current reaches the console, it goes into something called a capacitor, which is kind of like a battery that charges and discharges really fast. And no, before you say, why isn't this in my phone? It basically holds literally no charge for the size of it. It's hardly anything. Your phone would literally die even if it's full. But yeah, the amount of time that it took for the capacitor to charge was measured by the computer, with this time being measured as a numerical value, which is digital and can be read by the computer. Oh, and for how the joystick springs back every time you use it, well, it uses a simple old spring. It still does that nowadays. Over time, the joysticks became curved and they basically still use the same process, except it was curved in it instead of just straight. And this technique was still also analog too, so it still used the same capacitors. And obviously, this took time and they wanted to do something about that because it's not instant instant. It could still be faster. And it was also putting a strain on the console at the time. Obviously, they're not as powerful as they are now. So they started to build later controllers with the processors actually in the controller themselves, the analog to digital processors. And as well as them saving time, it also allowed for the controllers to basically give out a digital signal um, over a wire. So instead of having to use those old kind of things that I had to plug into the console, it could use something like USB, which every computer uses. And then going forward to nowadays, we don't use analog at all, even in joysticks. So how it works now is it basically uses LEDs and photocells, which are, yes, the same photocells that are used in solar panels, which bring in light, convert it to energy, yada yada. And if you don't know what LEDs are, it's basically what I'm using now to light myself up. It's also what's in your screens, in your TVs, all of that stuff. At least, most likely, if you've got a thin TV. And basically how it worked is that there's an LED on one side, there's a filter cell on the other side, and there's the controller bit in the middle, and while it's moving, it's basically blocking off some of the light from the filter cell that's on this side, as well as the same setup that's this way and this way, and there's a filter cell on this side. So by using the filter cell on the x-axis as well as the filter cell on the y-axis and seeing how much light is hitting both of them, it can tell exactly where the joystick is. Because obviously if the joystick's facing that way and there's a bit coming down like that, the filter cell on the x-axis is not going to be getting any light whatsoever. So the computer will know that the joystick's all the way that way. And it basically works like that. And then on top of that, nowadays we have wireless. And how wireless works is pretty simple. It's the same way that Wi-Fi works on your computer. So the majority of game controllers use the same 2.4 GHz network that most Wi-Fi routers use. If you don't understand what that means, don't worry, but basically it pretty much just uses the same wavelength that your router uses. So just as you connect a laptop to a Wi-Fi router, you're connecting your game controller to your console. It's basically the same thing. 
And if it's not using that, it's going to be using something like Bluetooth to connect to it. There's nothing really kind of different about a controller connecting to a console as there is a laptop connecting to a router. And yeah, that's how controllers worked all the way from the early ones to the modern day ones. If there's anything that you're confused about or you just fancy asking some sort of questions, be sure to leave those in the comment section down below. Be sure to let me know if you want to see more videos like this and subscribe to see when they come out. So yeah, I hope you all have a great day. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.